Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, down on the bench today, we have an ICOM IC706 Mark II. Now, the uh, owner's original uh, complaint is that the power button is stuck. And uh, it's probably a little metal dome switch. In fact, let me grab the mic. Sorry about the noise. If we click the buttons, you hear a nice click, but not the power button, nothing there. And of more concern to me, I don't know if that came on the mic or not, but there's something small rattling around inside. Um, just a quick note, if you're going to ship a radio, um, pack it yourself so that you know it's packed well. Uh, he dropped this off at a, wherever he shipped it from and asked them to pack it. And uh, I have a couple of pictures. The box took quite a beating when it arrived. And when I opened it up, the uh, control head was well packed. It, it was wrapped up in bubble wrap. Uh, but it and the radio and the power cord were just basically floating inside the box. There was one layer of bubble wrap just sort of loosely thrown in around it um, so it was bouncing around in the box so I don't see any cosmetic damage on the radio from its ordeal on its way here no broken fins on the heat sink or any dings or dents and the control head uh, the knobs and everything look okay of course it was wrapped individually in bubble wrap which is good but that rattle bothers me so anyway to the switches this is probably those little metal dome dimple switches just from the kind of click that I feel off of those when I push them or they might be small micro switches but there is definitely nothing on that power switch it's not moving it's uh, it wiggles around but it's it's rigidly in place it's not floating up and, and clicking down so we're gonna open this uh, control head up and we're gonna see what's what on the inside so let me reposition the camera. Well, there is a chip. There's a chip on the knob right there. It looks like uh, something gouged a chunk of it out. I wonder what's up with that. Well, let me reposition the camera and we'll open this thing up and uh, see what's going on inside. Well, there's two screws in the back. And then it's probably snap fit. So we'll have to be careful. Yeah, it leverages up. There we go. Release the bottom and then the top just leverages out. There's our PC board. Now it's holding it in. The knobs are mounted separate. Now well, we got the control head all opened up. And it is a small switch right here. Now, uh, I'll zoom in and post. Hopefully you can see this thing. It's a little rectangular surface mount switch. And the button is stuck. It's not moving in or out. Not providing a nice click like the others. Yeah, the others go tink, tink. You can feel them click in. And this one is stuck. Now, this is a very common type of surface mount switch. And in fact, uh, don't ever throw anything out. Um, I have here the front panel off of a TYT radio that I've already stolen an encoder off for another repair. And it has three of those switches right there on the front panel. These are real common surface mount switches. So I'm going to desolder one of these and replace 
it's, it's actually an identical switch. This uh, red tab and everything, this is exactly the same switch. Um, like I say, it's real common. So I'm going to desolder one of these and replace that power switch on the uh, front panel of the uh, 706. And I found what was rattling inside of it. It was this little spring right here. Um, this little spring goes in the latch button, which this is the slide button that, that latches the control head onto the radio, and that's what had come out. So we'll have to address that too, get that, that spring back in where it needs to be. It's got a little post. Yeah, it's tricky. It's got a little post in the control head where it goes, where it then uh, holds that slide button right here. So you can slide it to release the case. So that was that problem. As far as taking the PC board out of the control head, um, the two pots here are on their own separate board and they have a ribbon cable that goes up through to the other side. The only uh, nut you had to take out was on the uh, main encoder for the VFO. And then the board is held in place with little, little tiny snaps around the edge here. So you kind of flex the case out away from the board and it comes up and then comes straight off. So pretty easy taking the control head apart. But now I'm going to have to uh, desolder. Oof, I'm going to practice on this board. I'm going to use some solder wick and the iron and see how easy it is to desolder one of these. And if I can, can get them off of there easy enough, then I'll take the one off of the icon board and we'll replace the switch. And then we'll put it all back together and uh, we'll test the radio out and see if it, uh, if it survived the trip, the bouncy, abusive trip here. <laughs> Hopefully everything's okay. So I'll be back. One. All right. Well, here we go. I really need better equipment to work on surface mount stuff. But... The tabs for these little switches are right on either side of them, so I think a little bit of solder braid. And I got a pretty fine tip on this iron. It comes down to a nice point, so we'll get a little solder on the tip of the iron. And we'll take the braid and we'll just... Uh, Oh, I'd like to get an angle where you guys could see me doing this, but I really don't know that I can. And I'm going to get the braid in here, and I'm just going to try to wick some of the solder off that tab. Looked like it worked. I think I'm going about this wrong. I think what I need to do is I need to get the tip of a razor in here. So I can apply a little pressure and then I just need to touch the tab with the soldering iron, which should, let me just pop it up. Yep. That's the trick. Just get a razor edge under there, and it pops right out. And there we have a freed up switch. Okay, I think I'm ready to take the bad switch off of the icon board now. Bad button, good button. So where the solder wick's going to come in again. I think I'm going to clean some of the old solder off the pad first. There we go. And 
nice clean pads. We'll set the switch right over the top. It lines up good. Get a little solder on the tip of the iron. Hold the switch there and apply the solder. Okay, that side's in. And we have a new power button in there. And it clicks. All right. Let's put the whole thing back together and uh, see if it works. Okay, it's all back together. I got the spring remounted for the little latch on the side. And all the buttons now work, including power switch. Now I also found that another button was bad up here where one of the band switches was bad, but it's now working. We can switch band up and down just fine. All the rest of the buttons are working. Menu button. Look, heard beep. So there we go. The radio is working okay, and we've got two of those little micro buttons replaced, and uh, the control panel is fully functional again. So I'll contact the owner, let them know it's ready to come back to them, and we'll pack it up well before we ship it. So that was uh, tedious. Um, getting the control panel back in here, or the board back in here, was uh, really, really tricky. You had to line all the uh, button extensions up and just get it in there just right and uh, that took a little time but uh, it's all working now so another successful repair thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up also if you're not already a subscriber click to subscribe join us on the facebook channel for discussion about the videos and if you'd like to help support this channel please click to support me on my patreon page